Well, it's a beautiful day. There's no beautiful day such as Friday. Well, I'm saying that because, you know, it's good to be alive today. And here on Friday with Mr. B, we're talking about things that should challenge us to realize that we ought to take a center position in changing the direction of this country. Mr. B, good to see you. Good to see you. Excellent. Salam Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year once <laughs> again. Oh, yes. It's a Happy New Year. Yeah. And we're really glad about what's happening in the country especially looking at the theme that we've been looking at throughout uh, since the inception of Friday with Mr. B, corruption. Mm. So far, since we started the year, what, what is your feel? Is it, is it that we are on a higher note or people are still in that festive season and saying, you know what, let, let us give it two weeks and then we'll hit the ground running. Mm. What is your feel? Yes, issue of corruption is huge in Africa. And uh, there are two major issues that you cannot uh, escape. One of them is in the area of democracy and governance, where people want to continue being president, irrespective of what the feeling is in the country. And again, it's all democratic uh, uh, kind of uh, principles. But the other one that is equally, if not even bigger, is corruption. And people and the general society has come also to understand that uh, uh, for the first time that this corruption is an animal against each of us. There's general feeling now in the people. So I think even though we are still young in the year, mm. uh, it is a, a very relevant and a charged issue. Right. You know, throughout uh, the festive season, of course, we were talking about different aspects of corruption that perhaps we've not really explored in the past. For instance, how we aid corruption unknowingly. And something that came up uh, during our discussion was the fact that, you know, even in churches, churches can receive money from a particular congregant and never really ask the dynamics. But then that also brings me to the aspect of um, what has been happening currently, social edit, uh, audit of the different uh, public servants. Yes. And um, the question has been, don't worry about where I get my money from. Don't worry about how I build, uh, how I built my house or how I got my car. Just appreciate the fact that I am rich. When did we start this culture? Because that's where there is a bit of a problem there. Uh, I think this culture came about when people were under colonial system, uh, generally, Many, many people are poor, but there are few people who are relatively uh, better, but not by far. The gap was very small. But uh, after the independence, especially people who joined the public service, they start becoming wealthy very fast. And you remember we discussed uh, in one of the sessions that all very wealthy people in Kenya, without almost exception, they have served in the public sector. At one point. At one point. They have been peers, they have been director of a parastato, they have been in the public sector. And that is odd because public sector was that time paying people quite lowly salaries, but some of the wealthiest people came from public sector. And so, a poverty that people went through for many, many years during that period made people kind of feel uh, this is not a Christian value, of course. 
and uh, with the the gospel of materialism starts to come where God is really to bless you with the material and if it doesn't happen there is a curse there is a curse or you've sinned yeah or you have sinned that fueled that kind of but that is also forgetting that is the very pillar of Christianity is Jesus but you know Jesus is very lowly is a person without all this paraphernalia of wealth yet his impact is felt so there is another wealth Jesus displays the wealth of character the wealth of ideals and that's what got marginalized along the way and so uh, the focus now shifts to material well-being as a sign of blessings development and everything that is positive and uh, coupled with the corruption because now you have resources you could get justice you could get the best medical care you could get everything according to that philosophy but if you look at the people who have made impact jesus leading them you come to people like mahatma gadi even you come to people like mandela they are not counted as uh, these are the the number 1 number 2 number 3 richest folk very powerful very powerful martin luther king very powerful even there is a holiday in the us mm -hmm. over this black guy martin luther mm -hmm. king mm -hmm. So there is another wealth that has been kind of sidelined. Well, Mr. B, I'm, yes. I'm just a bit concerned because yes. um, even in, in biblical terms, they say a poor man's wisdom cannot even be heard. Yes. And let's be frank here: if you have money, you will yes. gather crowds. People will come and they will celebrate you. Yes. And that, that, that seems to be the it thing. I want to. put on the best clothes i want to drive yes. the best car in yes you know th yes. Th that's it so how do we yeah. go around that because it's a reality you see the nobody really would say let's celebrate poverty for instance we can celebrate poverty it is good to to be to have resources yeah and the resources is 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 a blessing also from god but if you look at also the same bible what it says about people who stole from the other people there is a stronger rebuke for those people who do that so it's not well that a uh, the biblical teaching is against is how you acquire that wealth and how you use that wealth those two things how you acquire yeah and how you use that wealth yes. looking at the current situation in the country and we really want to lord what um, the national treasury cabinet secretary henry rotich is doing uh, there is actually going to be a social audit of all the public uh, management uh, service officers mm. and some will be deployed mm. uh, to other places and of course there is even another one that they will not work in ministries for more than 3 years and this is really in regards to the there's a task force mm. on you know reviewing the legal policy and institutional fr framework exactly mm. and so that brings us to the subject of social audit of course we started with the Kenya Revenue Authority and now it's moving Yes. What is your feel? What is your take on that whole? Uh, there are two things. First, it's a good thing 
to do the social audit. Of course, there is concern in uh, people like myself and I'm sure the others that uh, uh, who is going? This question was posed by Ghanaian president. What Atom about? Mills. Yeah. Who is that watchman? Who is going to do social audit? Uh huh. Who watches the watchman? Yeah, who watches the watchman? <laughs> eh? Right. And uh, that person, is he going also to be bribed? All right. Yeah. So if I'm coming to audit you, yeah. you can also bribe me yeah. <laughs> to give a totally different result. Yes. I see. So when you start with a society where corruption is a major issue, it's very, very difficult to solve a problem. Uh, take like now uh, increasing of traffic penalties, offenses, you know, when you commit an offense then pen penalties, 10,000, 30,000 is two year jail, you know, just for traffic offenses. So what it has done is more money to the police who are asking for bribes. Yeah. So that is an area that uh, of major concern that this, these people who are going to do the social audit, either we get them from mass, <laughs> and not Kenya, and not Kenya. <laughs> but, but, Mr. B, I mean, at least we're doing something. For in, for instance, the county um, chief officer of yeah. uh, Nairobi. Yes. Uh, George Wainaina. Yes. was actually arrested on Wednesday yes. uh, by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Yeah. And they realized that since 2013 and up to now, mm -hmm. he has amassed a lot of wealth. Yes. And of course they arrested him. Yes. And uh, for me, when I look at that kind of story, unless we're saying perhaps there will be sacrificial lambs mm -hmm. to sort of sanitize the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That is also a possibility. That, of course, there are people who, like George Wainaina, who comes not far from my home area, uh -huh. uh, and they will be arrested. But you might think, oh, then the, the county government of Nairobi is fine. Uh, it is something that should be done systematically it is something that must become a culture of this country, not in selective order, systematically. For instance, it should start with the President Kenyatta himself. He should offer himself for that social audit. Declare his wealth. Yeah. Declare his wealth. The next is Ruto. He is put under the same scrutiny. Why? Because the power of people tend to use other people as conduits who will get the money for them for campaign. And so, to avoid that, they must say, if we want Kenya to take this route of social audit. There is nobody, there are no preferences, no sacred cows. Just like Bob Colimo said, I'm going to declare. I'm ready to declare my wealth. Yeah. And of course, that's a sign that every one of us should actually come to that yeah. place of declaring their wealth. We want to take a short break. I want to take a short break. When we come back, definitely we'll be looking at, yes, this is what's happening in terms of social audit. But uh, what about you and I? <laughs> Should we also put under the same radar? And what are the action points moving forward? We'll be right back. <laughs>